Hi guys, welcome to my weekly Facebook live show. And I'm also on Instagram, doubling up on content. Um, I'm Jen Burson. I'm the founder of Generation PR. Uh, what's happening over here? Okay, this is good. Hi guys. Um, I am the founder of Generation PR, a public relations and social media marketing agency or agency here in Los Angeles. I do a weekly Facebook live show every Thursday. I was out last week, took the family to Zion and Bryce Canyon in Utah for hiking, um, had the best time. We all needed it. Oh, hello guys. Um, our family needed it. We needed time away together. We needed time away from computers. <laughs> all of us did time out in nature. Um, Facebook, let me know if you can see me because I see it says preview mode. I don't know why it's a little different because I updated my broadcast software. Um, but I'm really excited to chat with you today because our community, the profitable PR pros community on Facebook, which you may be watching this there, um, or if you're on Instagram, come join us. Hi guys. Uh, over on Facebook. Just look for, yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. Just look for us on Facebook, Profitable PR Pros. Join that community. Um, not right now because you're here, but, um, oh good. Hi, Nelson. Nelson confirmed that Facebook is working. Okay, cool. Thanks for being here. Hi, Tammy. Um, cool, cool. Okay, great. Hi, guys. Um, oh, my awesome members of my programs are here too. So um, our, our Facebook group is, oh God, oh God. Do you see this? Ah, there's a humongous, oh my God. <laughs> it's a huge bee like this big. Oh my God, the other day I had a hummingbird, anyone who followed the hummingbird saga. I keep my window open, my, my balcony door, cause it's just really beautiful. <laughs> but this poor little hummingbird flew in and it got stuck in the skylight and it couldn't get out. So I had to like use a broom to like gently get it out. And then it was stunned and I, I'm not even kidding you if you missed the story. I had to create like a like a sugar nectar because the thing got exhausted. It couldn't flap its wings and hummingbirds need a ton of energy to be able to flap their wings as fast as they do. And I was reading online that if they don't get nectar, they'll, they'll die because they can't fly away. So this thing was stunned and it wasn't moving. So I created nectar. I'm not even kidding you. I put it in a little eyedropper and I dropped the nectar back into the hummingbird's mouth for like an hour and then finally it got up the energy to fly away so i should have learned my lesson to shut the door because all these critters keep flying in and when i tell you this bee is like that it's like one of those big okay i think it's finding the door get out <laughs> good okay it's out i should shut the door um anyway i'm alive <laughs> so crazy um Facebook people, thanks, <laughs> thanks for sticking with me through that craziness. Oh, Nelson said we missed you last week. I had the best time with my family. Um, oh God, it's back. You know what? Hold on one sec. <laughs> Shut the door before this thing comes back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay, we're safe, everyone. Um, I appreciate that you said you missed me. I try to be as consistent and reliable as possible with um, my weekly show. Um, and you want to know something really cool I'm really excited about. My team and I just talked about um, launching a podcast. I know I've been like, it's been on my radar for forever and ever and ever. And I actually had a podcast idea. Um, CBS came to me and asked me to pitch an idea to them. And I put this whole show concept together and then they passed on it. And I was like, you guys came to me. It was like so rude. I was like, you came to me, you asked me to develop this. We recorded an episode and then you passed on it. <laughs> and I'm like, kind of kicked me while I was, it just made me feel like, hmm, why did you ask me to do this? And then tell me, well, your audience isn't big enough. And I'm like, you came to me. But anyway, so we have decided that we are going to create a podcast. Um, we're going to interview a lot of members of our programs, um, share tips and strategies like this. Yay! Thanks, Ashley. I'm really excited. I know everybody's like, I have exciting news. I'm launching a podcast. And I realize it's not exciting to anyone else. Um, but that just came up with my team and I'm I'm excited. And you know what? We, we hope to make it really valuable and definitely introduce you to... <laughs> 
to members. Oh my God, over here, Clara saying, oh my God, that happened to me last week, not with a podcast, but I hate when people reach out to you and then judge you and pass. What the F is up with that? It's so rude. You're like, you came to me. So awkward. Um, yeah, anyway, so we're working on that. We're thinking about maybe like an August launch. Um, so I'm excited to be able to have more content and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so if you have any ideas for episodes or you want to talk about your expertise, um, it's going to be all around PR pros, pitching, I think we're going to call it pitching powerhouse, um, which is a trademarked term we are using. Um, anyway, more to come. But this uh, community gives us all of the topics that we share on these Thursday shows. And this one came up quite a bit in our group all about coming back into PR after you've had a long gap in your resume or just a long gap in your career. And now later is you want to come back to it. Now years later, you want to come back to it. Um, so we did a lot of research because I wanted to have actionable takeaways for you so that you had steps you could take if this was you. Um, and I had a lot of people reach out privately and say, I'm really excited about this topic because I've been wanting to get back in and I haven't known where to start. So I have seven tips for you. I'm going to walk you through them. And my goal for you is make them actionable so that you can, you know, know the steps to take and feel like you're making progress and progress gets you to momentum, right? We just want you to move forward. So tip number one, if you want to get back into PR, it's like the number one thing that I could think of is to leverage your previous expertise and experience. I have realized that there's this mindset challenge um, where people feel like, well, I'm starting over. You know, I'm just starting over. I'm coming back into it. I'm starting from scratch. And you're not starting over. I feel like that does a disservice to your past experience, like you're discounting the experience that you have just because there's been a gap. I mean, maybe contacts have changed, but the skills that you had before, like storytelling and how to position your clients, um, you know, the whole deal, um, making something relevant, timely, these are still within you. These strategies are still within you and something you can use and leverage. And it never went away. These are things you honed in the past. Um, maybe you need to sharpen those skills again, and we'll talk about that. That's the next tip. But um, yeah, so uh, Jay Liberty is saying, I agree, just posted that you'd never truly start from ground zero. No, because you have these experiences or this experience um, and expertise, and it's a skill that you've honed. Um, uh, Oh, so Ashley, are you saying just starting from scratch with no experience or are you saying um, something different? Let me know about that because um, a lot of these I think will apply to somebody who's just starting out. But that's a big one because I feel like a lot of the people that come to me and say, I want to get back into PR and I don't know where to start. I'm starting from nothing. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're, or they're, they'll say I'm starting from zero. You're not. You still have these skills and that I'm starting over is a mindset that that's the place I want you to start. Shift that thinking because that'll give you some confidence. Um, what's happening here? Okay, cool. Um, so that's number one, the core of what makes you a PR pro and what makes a PR pro great with storytelling and positioning and mastering the art of time, timeliness and relevance. All of that is still within you. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Number two is hone your skills. Yeah, just starting. Okay, Ashley, we'll talk about that. Um, this is a really good one for that, Ashley. Hone your skills. So I just so happen to have a program, a membership called the Pitch Lab. And the goal of the Pitch Lab is to hone your skills to get you up to speed with the latest approach in PR. It's an ever-evolving um, field, and we want you to master the art of pitching. That's where the term pitching powerhouse comes into play. We want to turn you into pitching powerhouses. So you're mastering the art of timeliness and relevance, um, that you have access to media contacts that are relevant right now. Um, you know, So we have a resource for that. But also the key are these monthly execution plans. 
and they save you so much time and they help you stay relevant. So the Pitch Lab has at the foundation an entire program centered around training you how to do PR, the step by step by step for how to do PR, what it takes, you know, building a strategy all the way to pitching, building media lists, writing pitches, following up, all of, all of that. Um, but then on top of it, we do these monthly execution plans and they are like, at this point, 50 pages long because we're giving you long lead and short lead editorial calendars and the specific things that certain publications are working on in the right time frame. So we give you something each month that allows you to think short term this month, what am I supposed to be focusing on? Pitch themes and angles plus long term, like long leads, I should say, four months from now or sometimes like with gift guides, six months from now, what should I be doing this month? Like, what is it, July 1 coming up? Actually, we just released our July execution plan a couple um, last week. So you have two weeks before the start of the month to focus on and plan your activities for July. So you don't even have to think like what's coming up. You know, it's we tell you what the media is thinking now so you can plan your pitches and we give you all kinds of pitch angles and all that. OK, so that's there for you and it'll instantly like bring you up to speed and I want you to think about that core skill of pitching. It's so important. And if you aren't using these pitching skills, maybe you lost some of them or you just need to kind of polish them up a bit. So it's never a bad idea to invest in re-educating yourself to earn the best results for your clients. Because the key for that, Ashley, too, is that it allows you to feel confident when you are pitching your services, right? Because you... There, there's a lot of this that is mindset. And if you feel like oh, I'm rusty and I don't know what I'm doing or I don't really know how PR works these days, that's going to come through in your confidence when you're kind of selling your services. Um, you know, so and we'll talk about getting getting back into paying clients. But um, the, the pitch lab will give you that confidence. It gives you a roadmap. Hello, Natasha. Oh, so sweet. And Natasha, I don't know if you saw, we did a newsletter yesterday dedicated to you um, and your story and the case study video that you were so generous to allow us to create um, based on your um, founding your agency. So I hope you saw that. Um, so that's number two, hone your skills. If you have no idea where to start, the Pitch Lab, it's so no brainer. It's $97 a month. It's like no commitment, just come in for a month. Um, within two months, you'll have access to the whole uh, roadmap, two execution plans. If you decide to stay, fine. If not, go. It's going to help you. And it's a no brainer investment. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, yay. Okay, cool. I'm so glad you got a lot of supportive messages. That's awesome. We love you. Um, okay, so that was number two is hone your skills. Number three, choose a niche. Um, yes, it will help with the confidence. Yeah, Ashley um, is saying that happened to me in a, in a pitch to a potential client last week. It's There's so much. I would say of anything that I teach, um, selling, like pitching your business, building your pipeline, being confident in sales calls, like converting um proposals to um, retainers is my, like sales is my thing that I think that I'm the best at. And I realize a lot of it is confidence. So everything that I teach is geared towards building your mindset and your confidence and getting you like in that place where you're like, I'm, I'm the best. Like I'm, I know exactly what's up. I know how to promote your brand. There's no one better than me. Not that you're saying that, but that's your, like your energy. Um, you know, so uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, the Pitch Lab's awesome. And then when you're ready, like the Agency Accelerator really, really helps you build your, your PR agency in a strategic way. Um, and then this one, um, Ashley. So I'm kind of doing this for getting back in, but also for someone like Ashley, who's really breaking in from starting. Um, Natasha says, Ashley, we are a family in the Pitch Lab. So much collaboration. We had a really great Zoom meeting yesterday. We absolutely did. Um, it was so good. Oh my God, it was so good. Every week, every month, I'm like, oh my God, these people are so smart. So we collaborate and we, we tr troubleshoot. And for sure, it's not just me being like, let me tell you everything. I am like, you guys connect, help each other out. This person has done exactly what you're looking for. 
and they come on. We had a new member say that they um, jumped in, went to all the recordings from the past calls, and they watched several of the most recent calls and already felt like they were part of the community. Um, and they were so excited to be on one of the calls live. Like it was super cool. So thank you for that, Natasha. Um, share contacts, we connect, we collaborate. It's it's awesome. It's kind of a no-brainer. So check it out. Um, but number three I have for you is choose a niche. So this is for someone like Ashley who's just starting out or getting back into it. Niching down again, so if you're just getting back in, will help you restart your career in PR. So don't try to come back in and be a generalist because you have to learn so many different things, um, figure out so many new contacts, get up to speed in so many different industries, and you never really truly become that sought after expert that's like a deep subject matter expert where you talk the talk and you know what you're doing and clients come to you and they're willing to pay a premium for you um, because you're it. Like they want to work with you because you're the one that focuses on this niche and you know everything about it. So don't try to be a generalist. It will not work. It'll take you longer to really ramp up your career or get back into it. Think about the work that you did in the past that you really loved. Um, what were those niches? Where did you get the most results? Um, where did you, uh, where were you the most connected? Where did you have the most contacts? So think about that. Or you can also think about the work you did in the past that you were like, I don't want to do that anymore. That was a bummer. It drained, it drained me. Um, I always felt like I was running in place. I never felt like I could get ahead of it. Um, you know, that kind of a thing where it's like, where did you get great results? You can leverage those results. But it's also about choosing a niche that you love that you can work in long term. You know, like I'm in beauty and cosmetics. I friggin love the beauty and cosmetics industry. Um, my bathroom counter is getting out of hand. I don't know what happened, but there's been an explosion of products. I don't know what is going on. Um, it's too much. My husband's like, is there ever such a thing as enough skincare? And I was like, no, <laughs> never enough. <laughs> so, and Natasha and I always message about beauty products, but, um, you know, I love it. And I've been doing it for 16, almost 17 years in that niche. And I still love it. I also do baby and kids. Um, I have a call with a skincare company right after my Facebook live. <laughs> no, Kevin, <laughs> no, Kevin, not ever. Um, and he gets my cast offs too. I'm like, do you need an eye cream? Um, but, uh, and I had a call yesterday with a baby and kids brand and we can come in with a five figure retainer and confidently put it out there because they're coming to us because we are known in those niches. Um, so keep that in mind, Ashley, as you're building your business, but anyone else who's coming, coming back in out of nowhere, um, that allows you to jump back in when you have a more focused path than trying to be all things to all people. That doesn't work. And you'll just find yourself like running in a million directions, not really making these deep contacts, not really being able to kind of focus your efforts and go deep. So I always say go deep instead of going broad. Um, and you may feel like you're kind of cutting off some opportunities, but you end up opening up more opportunities because people will see you as the go-to for that thing. And you can really focus in on that and promote yourself as the expert in those niches. Okay. So that's a really good one for coming back into it. And also for being kind of sort of brand new, like Ashley, um, niche down and really think about, um, you know, where did you get the, the past, um, best results? Where do you maybe have or feel the most connected? What do you have the most industry know-how in? It might even be your personal, um, a personal um, interest in so that you can love it long-term. Um, so think about that. That's number three, choose a niche. Number four, and Ashley's saying, I started a thread in this group with a huge list of niches if anyone needs to see it. That's awesome. We talk about niches inside one of my programs. Um, it's called Lead to Landed. And it really, you know, focuses on the, the kind of pre-work you're going to do before you start filling your client pipeline with your ideal clients. So um, that's awesome. Maybe we'll turn that into a resource, Ashley, and add it to the program so people can start to think about that. Thanks for pointing that out to me. I'm going to give you like a little like. I think I can do that. Cool. Oh, well. 
What's happening? Um, oh, awesome. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll read that in one second. That's awesome, Nelson. Wow. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, okay. So oh, let me just read it. So Nelson, th thank you so much for sharing this. He says, here is some feedback for about um, the Profitable PR Pros group and what a great resource it is. I had a problem with a client last week who wanted to cut my fee because his board of director directors were asking for cuts. I reached out to the Profitable Bull PR Pros group for feedback and got a lot of great responses. I wanted to confirm in my own mind that the way I was going to handle it was the correct way and that everyone in the group agreed with my thinking, which they did. That's awesome. Um, and that gives you confidence. I'm sure that gave you confidence to go back, right? And here's what he said. Um, the bottom line is that I stood my ground and did not offer any discount because I had already given them a discount when they when the contract started 18 months ago, I also put in my response email all the value I was bringing to the company. The CEO understood and on Thursday of this week told me to send my renewal contract as is, no discounts, which has now been signed. So I want to say um, that uh, it is so important to have a community to reach out to, to bounce things off of. And I want to personally thank everyone in the group who offered me their insight. This was an amazing experience for me, and I also want to personally thank you, Jen, awesome, for creating this group in the first place. That's so awesome. Yeah, awesome. Okay, and Ashley's saying she just it leads to Landon, and it was great. Oh, if you think that's great, just wait. Like, get in the pitch lab. You will be like, it's so good. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. That's so great. Nelson, congratulations. That is huge. I love it. Um, good job. Good job. See, stand your ground, guys. Don't like... Don't cower to clients. Like if you're adding value, you know, they need you. They need you. So just make sure you reiterate the value you bring. Um, okay. So number four is now that you kind of have your niche and you've chosen your niche, um, get back on top of trends and reacquaint yourself with the current landscape of PR and earned media and paid media. Okay. So PR is now like earned media and paid media. Um, it used to be that PR pros were just about getting earned media, but now there's a lot of crossover with um, paid media, owned media, which are like blogs, um, content you're putting out, social channels, um, and paid media also is like paid social promotions um, and influencer collaborations. So clients will come to us and say, we have a budget for influencers. Can you help us manage it? He's right here. <laughs> My son had a sleepover last night, and now he's catching up with the cat and the family. We all missed him. It was like, we felt like it was a little bit of an empty house last night. Um, so keep in mind that things have changed a bit. Um, and actually, we talk about this in the pitch lab. We want to give you kind of the most up-to-date um, stuff that's going on in PR. So you have to kind of be aware that earned media isn't just what PR is about. So you have to be aware. Um, Natasha saying product placement segments are going pay to play. Yes, that's been a big shift we've been seeing in a, for a while. Um, hang on just one second. Hey, you guys, guys, shut the door. Um, yeah, uh, large outlets. Yeah, that's happening. And also kind of the requirement for products to have affiliate um, connections, like affiliate revenue opportunity, um, and how you mention that in your pitches, very important. Even mainstream outlets are required to have affiliate links. Um, you have to keep that in mind. We talk about that in the Pitch Lab. Um, we're actually going to be doing a masterclass on it. Um, it's really important. So you have to be aware that your role now may encompass some of the social work, the awareness of how to get your clients not technically set up, but inform them about why it's important, even in the sales calls, why it's important that they consider owned, paid, all of that is like really important. So, um, and, and of course, influencers. So whether you have someone you refer out, whether you do that as part of your media outreach, whether it's an additional paid service and they have a budget that you're managing, 
if you are not considering that part of it, you may lose business. You may seem like you're not current. Um, and I and I represent products, so that's where that's most relevant. Um, but keep that in mind. So get back in, reacquaint yourself with what is happening now in PR, the crossover of earned, paid, owned, um, all of it has at least you have to at least have an awareness of it. And we do cover that in our in our programs. So that was number four. Get back on top of trends and reacquaint yourself with the current landscape of PR. Just being in the profitable PR pros group is a really uh, great place to start for that, too. Um, and number five, start networking again, profitable PR pros group. But um, update your LinkedIn profile, maybe create a website, a simple website. It doesn't have to be like all flashy, flashy but update your social media, do whatever you need to do to start vo forming valuable connections and put your public face out there for what you do, what you want to do, who you want to attract, um, leverage the kind of experience, leverage the experience you've had in the past or put out content and a presence that's going to bring in and attract the kind of work that you want to work on. Um, and of course, so update LinkedIn, create a website, a simple, you know, couple page website, either on um, uh, Squarespace or, you know, Wix or any kind of simple, simple site. Um, I also love Kajabi. That's where I host all my programs. But what I love it for for PR professionals is the ability to get paid through Kajabi to create processes that you can then kind of sell, get your clients onboarded um, and have a public facing website and then a way to transact. Um, and if you do recurring payments, you can do that through Kajabi. That's where I host all of my digital content. Um, really amazing uh, platform. And if you're interested in learning more, hit me up on DM and I can send you a link so you can get, get a trial there. It's really, really good. Um, and the other thing too, you know, like I said, join our community of PR pros um, our profitable PR, it's hard to say mouthful, our profitable PR pros community is a great place to really start. It's so simple to just get in. It's free, get mentorship support. You saw like what Nelson said. Um, I was out of town when he posted that. So I'm not weighing in on that, but look at the kind of seasoned pros with really great industry expertise that are so willing to share that are in that community. So um, you get opportunities to educate yourself, the support of a community, and you can see what other PR pros like Nelson and Ashley's in there and Natasha, what they're experiencing so that you can understand part of it is like, I'm not alone in this. I'm not alone in this and there are other people are facing these challenges or I have a question. I'm kind of like not sure how to approach this. Post it in the group and you'll see like Nelson got tons of feedback on his on his situation. So think about that and, and jump in and just kind of network with your peers. Um, number six, maybe this is the most pressing one for you guys or the one that you think is the most important, but I'm telling you, I didn't put it first because it's not the most important, at least it's not the first step, but um, get your first paying client. Okay. So here's how you do that. If you're looking and maybe this is Ashley, you know, getting to looking to get started. If you're looking to kind of jumpstart getting back into things, look to see if there's any freelance work that you could pick up to work on honing your skills again, building relationships, and getting comfortable with PR again so that you can get your sea legs back. Some of you may be looking to get a job, um, but this is a way that if you have a gap in your experience, a gap in your resume, and you want to show that you're still relevant, you're still dialed in, you still have contacts, pick up on freelance work in the meantime, to show that you're still working in the field, okay? Um, look for kind of like easy entry, low barrier types of roles. Certainly um, in our community, there are people looking for freelancers. Um, like I said, if you feel confident in your ability to storytell, to pitch outlets, come up with really clever story angles, write solid pitches, um, you're on top of following up, you know, that's a great kind of place to start with freelance services. So maybe they're not your clients, but you're offering freelance services 
to someone else. And that could fill the hole, the gap in your resume for when you try to look for a job. Um, you may even find that there's enough freelance work for you to continue to work there and then grow, like grow your um, possibly your own business or niche down, raise your rates. I have a lot of freelancers that work for me that make a super good living um, really not running their own firms because they don't, that's not their goal. They just want to like pitch and work in PR and they're so good at what they do and they get such great results and they niche down that there's enough work for them. Um, and so they've built really solid freelance careers, niching down and just, you know, working for a few agencies that need the support, um, and know how to sell yourself and answer any potential que questions about your break from PR. Clients won't necessarily know that you took a break, but if they do ask about it, have your story ready to go so you don't like stammer or flounder with filling that in. It's not something to be like ashamed of or feel like it puts you at a disadvantage. It's also like when I say I work from home, this came up on a call yesterday. Someone was like, oh, I see you're still working from home. And I was like, yeah, I always have worked from home. I said, now people are just catching up to what I've known for 17 years, that you can be really productive and effective working from home. Um, and, you know, the only change for me was that now my kids were going to school in the other room, but I never felt any shame or at least not recently about working from home. But imagine when someone asks you that question and in your mind, you're like, oh my God, that makes me less professional or they're going to think that I'm a hack or they're going to think that I'm not, you know, a, a top um, agency because I'm working from home, that's going to change how you respond. So when you talk to a client and they ask, oh, you know, so what have you been up to? Don't feel like you have to apologize for whatever you took your break for. Maybe having kids, um, maybe trying entrepreneurship in another field, maybe getting laid off and then taking a break. Um, maybe, uh, you know, trying your hand at a different thing altogether explain it clearly and confidently, but feel free to weave in how it's helped you to come back even more prepared to land amazing press features for them. So have that ready in case they ask and just approach it with confidence. Yeah, like I took this break. Um, I started this business and I was loving it and I learned so much. I learned about how all of the elements uh, of what I was doing for the PR work really came in to support sales and marketing and the overall goal and objectives of growing the company. And I really loved it. But, um, you know, my business, it took a huge hit when the pandemic started and I had to make that hard decision to move on um, and go back to pursuing my PR career you know, something like that so that you can explain, like, I got this great experience and look at how I learned and grew and how it can benefit you. So I think that's a good, um, you know, kind of place to come in and, and position that and have it ready in your mind so that you don't stammer. You can be confident. So that's seven. Uh, what is it? Um, get your first paying client. Um, maybe look to freelance. Um and then how to sell yourself and answer any potential questions about your break from PR. Position it as a positive. What have you learned? How can it benefit them? And then number seven for you, and I'm gonna wrap up with this one. I think it's a good one to end on. It might be the most important. Again, focus on your mindset and your confidence. Getting back into PR, it's really exciting. I love this industry. Um, there's just, there's it's changing, but there's so much opportunity. Ask Natasha, she just landed a new client this week. I had a call yesterday. I'm having a call today. Um, but I know there's a lot of fear that can surround making a career change or getting back into something where you feel like you may be just like a little out of shape. So Keep in mind that you have something unique to bring to the table. This skill that you had in the past, the ability to position a brand, to storytell, that's really valuable. You may take it for granted. Not a lot of people can just do that. Not a lot of people like see the bigger picture or see how to match a story with an outlet and then make those subtle nuances in their pitch to align it perfectly for one outlet and then tweak it for another. Um, do some self-reflection and figure out what you truly want and what success looks like for you. 
the type of work like life balance that you want and how your PR career will look now because it'll look different than when you maybe did it last time. Create a specific plan for making that shift from what you're doing now back to PR and map out the steps you need to take and how it's feasible for you. So, you know, what do you have to do to, I always try to say work backwards from a revenue goal. How many clients is that? Um, You know, how much do you want to work? How many hours? Um, I try not to really schedule anything on Fridays. So I have just a clear slate to catch up. Um, So that's what I try to do is figure out my revenue goal based on the amount of time that I actually want to work um, and what my career looks like to support the kind of life that I want to have. So um, keep in mind, everyone's journey in PR is different. If you have never heard about what my path was, I was an attorney. I left my career as a lawyer to start a PR agency with no contacts, no experience, no training. I just said, this seems like something that I would want to do. I did it unpaid on the side and really loved the work. And I thought if I could do this every single day, I would be so happy and I'd be working in my ideal career. So, you know, and now I've grown a very, you know, like sustained, like 16 year agency working with billion dollar brands and our niches, um, you know, spent doing something, spent the last 16 years doing something I absolutely love. So if I can do it with no training, no contacts and kind of start from scratch, you know, make nearly six figures my first year and then make, you know, grow, revenue growth year over year after that and, um, you know, have a really profitable business that I love that's developed on my terms, then I know that you can do it too. And of course, if you need support, um, having a community is so valuable. Having um, a mentor that has done what you've done and you can ask advice and follow in their footsteps and have a roadmap for success, super valuable. And we have a ton of resources for you if that's what you need. Um Oh, good. You, I know that you were trying to join this, uh, this live. I'm so glad that you were able to jump on. You should watch the replay. We'll post it. And it's also going to be in the Profitable PR Pros group. I had seven tips for you guys. Seven tips. Um, and I think they're good, you know, just to kind of have a, a place to chip away at getting back into it. Um, and Ashley, I hope that was helpful for you as somebody just starting out as well. I love that you already had lead to, lead to landed as a great foundation for building out your client pipeline intentionally. And then of course the pitch lab will just give you so much confidence and just like, you'll have so much that you'll be excited to have a client to actually apply what you've learned and get results for. Okay, good. I'm glad you'll, you'll check the replay. Um, but that's what I have for you today. Um, you know, if you want to learn the strategies that are working really well right now, we asked several of our members, including Natasha, for their insider secrets. We asked you what you wanted to know, and then we built out a resource where we asked our most successful PR pros for their insight. Um, awesome. Ashley says, these tips were extremely helpful for me. I'm so glad to hear that. And I'm so happy that you're jumping in and investing in yourself and getting focused and educated on how to be the best that you can be in your industry. And that confidence will come through when you sell your services to clients and it's just all good. So, um, you know, my team and I put this together. We were really excited because so many of our members have asked about it. And I felt that, um, that, almost negative mindset of like, I'm starting from scratch. What do I do? And we felt like we had to really show you you're not, you're not starting from scratch. It's a mindset shift. If you notice many of the strategies I gave you were mindset focused. Okay. Um, you know, so that's how you get back into it. Um, and post in the group, let us know about your journey, where you are, how we can support you. How can we be helpful to you? If you want to get freelance work, I've seen a lot of people posting in the group, uh, seeking freelancers or offering themselves up as freelancers. Um, so check that out and I'll stay on for a little bit longer. I have to get ready for, um, actually have time. I don't, you know, I have a call with a new skincare, potential new skincare 
client at noon my time. So let me know um, here if you have any questions. Um, and I'll stay on and definitely jump in and watch that replay over here on Insta. Um, let me know, guys. I'll stay on for just a little half second longer or whatever. Um, but I'm so glad to be back. My kids are out of school. They're not in camp. They're on devices. We got to get them back into something productive. But we had such an amazing time. Has anybody been to Zion or Bryce Canyon? Um, we hiked Angel's Landing. My nine-year-old did the part with the chains that's like really narrow with like a sheer drop off on either side. <laughs> Insane. Um, we also did uh, the Narrows where you need like water shoes and you're hiking through a river and it comes up to here. We had to kind of carry our kids. Um, and then we also uh, did Bryce Canyon. Um, really awesome. And I started to post pictures on Instagram. I post pictures when I return. I don't post pictures when I'm out of town. Um, you know, for obvious reasons, I just don't want anyone knowing I'm not home. Um, and I don't want anyone knowing where I am to keep my family safe anyway. Um, but I did Bryce. Um, oh yeah, no. Okay. Awesome. Ashley. Yes. You live in Utah. Definitely. And like, um, arches and Canyon Canyonlands, Bryce Canyon. We also did Capitol Reef, which is another national park, but it's, um, but it's, uh, smaller. It's like a smaller, it was really cool. They have this arch you can hike out to and, <laughs> and then walk on top of it. And it was just really cool. Yeah. Mindset's everything. She's over here saying the hardest thing is to keep believing in your skills, even when you're struggling, securing new clients. Yeah. Um, having a strategy for securing clients and knowing like how to position yourself is really also important. Um, no, I did not get bitten by mosquitoes. None of us did. There actually were not, we didn't wear bug spray and there were not any bugs that we got bitten by. Um, yeah, Ashley. Awesome. Um, head out there. It's so beautiful. You have some of the most beautiful national parks in Utah. So, um, it was awesome. My kids had a great time and it was really good to get back on and like off devices and together with my family. So, um, yeah, you guys, thank you so much for joining live. I always appreciate you guys. It's hard to sit here and I'm like talking to my face and my computer. I'm talking to the ether here. Um, but to have responses and know that we're sharing information that's helpful to you is everything. So we'll continue to put out content. We'll continue to put out more content in a podcast. Um, you know, so stay tuned, more of that to come. And if you have any questions or actually you want to um, learn more about the pitch lab and you need, you need a link or you have questions. Yeah. Oh yes. From Italy. Oh my God. I can't wait to get back out there. Oh, I'm so excited to get, we're talking about a trip, I think next year. Um, to Spain and Italy, just us. It'll be our 15th anniversary, no children. Oh my God, be so awesome. Um, so yeah, maybe that's a sign. I'm all into science. She said, greetings from Italy. My husband asked me yesterday, do we want to do this trip to Italy? And I was like, I don't know yet. Maybe I need to go. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much as always for being here. Wish me luck on this new business call. Um, there's a lot of work out there. There's so much work out there. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, people need your services. They need you now more than ever. Okay. And just have confidence in what you have to offer. It's a skill. Don't take for granted what you know how to do. Not everybody can do what you know how to do. Okay. Think of all the value you add. Look at what Nelson did. He positioned the value that he has been providing to his client when they asked him to discount his services and he stood his ground and said no. And not only did they agree with him, they signed an extension of his contract for no discount. You add value. You add value. And when you can show your clients, they will pay for it. Okay. Glad to see you guys. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see you soon. Ciao for my friend in Italy. Ciao.